Speed and elusiveness are the name of the game with the dual blades. You can zip all around the monster doing damage and avoiding its attacks with ease through quick dashes and evade shots that will see you simultaneously dive out of the way while possibly making the monster flinch. If you want a visual representation of how you'll probably look while you use dual blades, here's an example. Let's take a look into the reasons why I love the dual blades. The build that I used in a majority of the gameplay footage is the build I actually did a video on, so that's a build that relies heavily on element, and of course it can do some pretty good damage. The long and short of it is that you're going to be critting 100% of the time, regardless of where you hit, and we'll be getting a lot of benefit from using both the Kiar weapons and the Safi 5 piece armor set. If you want more detail on that build, feel free to check out that video. But I don't want to leave you guys hanging without some sort of build, so I decided to break off the meta path and have some fun with things. It's going to focus on getting as much time in demon mode as we can. The main thing to focus on is the top half of the skills. We're going to be using the Dragon Duel Blades for that sweet 20% affinity. Latent Power will give us another 60% affinity, and then the last 20% will come from Critical Eye. Of course we'll still want Crit Boost to max out that damage. Tool Specialist is also a nice benefit to have since we'll be utilizing Protective Polish, and that will extend it greatly. This is definitely not a meta build by any means, but when you can sit in Demon Mode for well over a minute with Dash Juice included, you might as well have some fun and run with it. We're going to be utilizing two set bonuses and a lot of armor pieces that you probably never or haven't used for a long time. The Anjanath set is going to give us an increase to our stamina, and then the Stygians and Nogar set is actually going to give us that latent power secret, which is not only going to give us 60% affinity, but it's also going to reduce our stamina drain by 50%. Now, of course, these set bonuses have an obvious good synergy with dual blades, especially for demon mode, but it's just the fact that, you know, the slot values and the efficiency of the pieces that you can use, it's not so great. Honestly, it really doesn't do that bad of damage at all. If you want to switch things up and go outside the meta, feel free to give it a try. When it comes to mobility, you'd be hard pressed to find a weapon better in that category outside of the sword and shield, but the dual blades come in at a close second for me. The spinning slash gives you all kinds of reposition possibilities while doing some solid damage. Having that kind of reposition readily available gives you a great offensive and defensive advantage, especially while you're in demon mode. The dash is quick, covers solid ground, and can be used to get out of compromising situations that you might have overcommitted to. You really bring out the best in its mobility when you throw in some evade window, or the greatest skill ever invented, evade extender. You can actually dash out of a lot of the attacks you do faster than most weapons. It'll see you actually pull off a sort of slide to get out of harm's way. The sheath speed of the dual blades helps to make you even more untouchable to a monster by making your superman dive much more accessible. The tactic I use the most with dual blades is trip locking monsters. That top tier positioning comes in handy when you want to do this. Getting underneath a monster and going crazy between its legs with the dual blades, you can position yourself underneath a monster and better position yourself to trip them repeatedly. One of the very best things that was introduced into Iceborne was the addition of the evade shot for the dual blades. After any of your triangle on PlayStation or Y attacks on Xbox, you can actually simultaneously dive out of the way and nail a monster with whatever you have in your slinger. This distance that you dive is actually dependent on what mode that you're in. So if you're in normal mode, you'll go a certain distance, but if you're in demon mode, you'll actually extend that distance that you dodge. Whether you have flash pods, dragon pods, stones, or knives, it's a great way to evade incoming damage while getting a solid shot and possibly even a flinch on the monster. It's so easy to keep on the move while dealing crazy amounts of damage. You'll honestly be so quick and fluid that you'll dodge plenty of attacks without even consciously trying to do so. The dual blades, like many other weapons, have benefited greatly from the introduction of the MR Kolv Tarath weapons. This goes both ways, whether we're talking about the element variety or the status ones. 
With this in mind, it's very simple to build towards either one. Dual blades have the benefit of not having any skills it has to cling on to for dear life to get the most out of it. Examples like Horn Maestro to my beloved hunting horn drastically change the effectiveness when you don't have it. Sure, there are skills that have a really positive impact on the dual blades, such as Marathon Runner decreasing the rate at which you lose your stamina and extend your demon mode, or Constitution helping you to get few more dashes and dodge more often. Stamina Surge is also an option, but it doesn't seem to give you the same return on investment as the other two. With all of this in mind, you can direct more of that space in your build to the element and still have a lot of room to build in comfort skills or things that apply best to your preferred playstyle. And the dual blades just do so well when it comes to putting out solid elemental damage. This is a weapon where honestly you want to go element heavy at all times. If you're the type of person who likes to build toward countering a monster and exploiting its elemental weakness, look no further than the dual blades. With the introduction of Safijiva, both the weaponry and armor, along with the Kiara weapons, the marriage of element and dual blades has never been stronger. In terms of status, you just have as strong of a case. The speed that dual blades can apply status effects is absolutely insane. I usually don't like using any kind of status outside of poison or blast, but with dual blades, I still frequently bust out the paralysis Kiara blades to have some fun. That's mainly because of the fact that blast and poison are just such solid status, but with how potent they are at applying status, I'm pretty much good with whatever when it comes to dual blades. But what if you can't pick between status or element? Well, that's actually not a problem. Sort of. The dual blades actually have two weapons that give you a combo of one element and one status. The best part is that the status that are on the weapons happen to be blast and poison. You have the fire and ice dual blades that are ice and blast, a fantastic combination for Shara. And then you have the wyvern strife which is a dope combo of fire and poison which would spell double the trouble for Shrieking Legiana and Namiel. And seeing as how we just got an AT version of Namiel, you might want to bust these out and give them a try. Speaking of good old Namiel, I have to give a shout out to our Discord member Pixel for pointing out the opportunity that Capcom missed to make Water and Thunder dual blades. I think having two elements might be too much in their eyes, but even if that's the case, they very well could have gone with the solid Water Paralysis combo. Regardless, I wouldn't be shocked at all if we got some kind of combo element status dual blades with the arrival of Alatrion. When you rock the dual blades, you have a powered up state that you can go into. This is called demon mode. It'll see you having much more urgency and quickness, gives you access to different attacks and tactics. You have to be mindful of your stamina while you're in the state because that's the resource that fuels it. Once you run out of stamina, you automatically revert back to your normal mode. But unlike Nezuko, you can switch in and out of demon mode at the press of a button. So if there's quite a bit of distance between you and the monster, you can drop demon mode to start to regain stamina or other tactical approaches like that. While you're in demon mode and scoring some of that sick damage it can deal, you'll simultaneously fill up a bar that's located under your stamina bar. This is for arch demon mode. You you automatically go into this mode when you have resources in that bar I alluded to and you drop out of demon mode. This is somewhat of a halfway point between your normal state and demon mode. You retain some of the demon mode benefits but you'll quickly notice that it's a tempered down version, shorter combos, etc. I want to make sure it's clear that you definitely want to be in demon mode over the arch demon mode. Arch demon mode is meant to be a buffer till you can get back into demon mode. And while you're in this demon mode state, there's plenty of potential for damage. I'm sure even if you've never used the dual blades, you know about the blade dance move. But whether you use them or not, I'm telling you, do not sleep on the spin, double circle slash, clutch claw, tenderizing combo. The amount of sick damage you can do is honestly underrated, and you get an instant tenderize out of it, so there's plenty of benefits of using it. Being able to do this with a light weapon is a pretty solid game changer, which is another awesome trait for the sword and shield as well. There are quite a few skills you can slot in to give you extra time in demon mode. Marathon Runner directly extends it by slowing down your stamina depletion while in demon mode. Constitution will give you more uses of that Naruto dash while you're in the mode. Stamina Surge indirectly helps by speeding up the rate at which you gain back your stamina when you go out of demon mode. Admittedly, Stamina Surge feels a bit underwhelming in a maxed out state when you compare it to Constitution or Marathon Runner. And while you're in Demon Mode, I want to reiterate that your evade distance will increase when you pull off an evade shot. Get yourself into Demon Mode and keep your uptime up as much as possible. 
be smart and efficient with the way that you use it. The weapon designs for dual blades are awesome, and I'm not just talking about designs from the ever-talented Iceborne mod community, even though there are plenty of absolutely sick designs from them, but even when we talk about designs that come straight from the mothership at Capcom, we have plenty of truly unique weapon designs. From daggers, to claws, to fist weapons, or even if you want to get your katana on, there's a few bladed fan designs for you to pick as well. Of all the weapons, I think the dual blades might actually have the best assortment of designs from top to bottom. It's pretty rare for me to see a pair of dual blades and think that they're lame or boring. For some hunters, the true end game is fashion hunting. I know Durandi, another member of our Discord community, was actually in some competitions to put together the best looking set, and if you're looking for a go-to weapon to find some awesome designs to complete your set, you have no trouble finding a nice set of dual blades to do the trick. Now, only if Hunting Horn and Switch Axe could get this kind of love. The dual blades also have a couple of high-flying tricks up their sleeve. This is something that we've seen be implemented into a lot of weapons in Iceborne. You have all of these fancy and potent attacks that come from jumping off a ledge or running up and bouncing off of a wall. I mean, we all know just how crazy spin to win is with the hammer, and then Team Darkseid just recently made a video talking about how powerful aerial bows could be. While the aerial attacks from the dual blades might not be as damage potent, they surely are just as fun and satisfying to pull off. The first resulting attack sees you go into somewhat of a partial bay blade spin and landing with a final spin to do some damage. The more satisfying of those two will see you go full Beyblade and spin yourself clear down the entire length of the monster's body. In each of these Why I Love videos, I talk about some of the most satisfying moments you can have with each weapon, and this is definitely the one for me when it comes to dual blades, especially when you manage to make the monster flinch, or even better, when you spin from the monster's head and finish at the tail with a solid removal of the tail, landing in your best ninjutsu stance. It's a pretty easy move to line up and pull off too. Another circumstance where these moves come in handy is for those flying monsters, especially ones like the Rathalos family that are in the air 95% of the time. The dual blades obviously don't have much in the sense of vertical reach, outside of maybe the circle slashes, but those aren't exactly readily available at all times. If you find yourself in a situation where you need to close a vertical gap, find the nearest ledge or wall that you're able to run up and Beyblade the monster and bring them down a level. What sounds better than going into a demon mode that will see you do more damage and have access to very impactful combos and moves. It's a very straightforward weapon once you get familiar with demon mode and how to use it in an optimal and efficient way. Now in saying that, it's a very straightforward weapon that doesn't mean that the dual blades are a one trick pony. You have so much mobility and positioning potential at your disposal that you can very easily pop in, do loads of damage, pop back out, and get yourself out of harm's way. The Iceborne mechanic Evade Shot is something that can be used with a lot of versatility. Whether you flashbang a monster, nail it with some piercing pods and cause it to flinch, or if you just use it to avoid damage. It can be a game changer in even dire situations. Another change that came with Iceborne and really brought great benefit to the dual blades was the removal of the element cap. It's a weapon that you really should build towards its particular element or status and have one ready to go for each of them. This is easier than ever with the introduction of the Kiara weapons and the versatility has been expanded as well with Safi weapons. Having that built in crit status or element really opens up the potential for whatever armor sets you want to use. Along with this, dual blades aren't a heavy skill needy weapon so you'll have a lot of freedom to build the way that you want. I know latent power isn't a heavily used skill but I honestly loved using it to bring break free from the meta, and its benefits synergize extremely well with dual blades. You'll be firing off a million slashes per minute and giving monsters a fit just trying to even scratch you. The dodging capabilities while in demon mode are extremely impressive and you can make great use out of evade window. I find it easier to dodge through attacks and roars with the dash in demon mode because it's so responsive, quick, and readily available. Not only do you have all the speed and elusiveness available to you, but you get to look awesome while you're doing that. You'll have a huge assortment of unique and fantastic looking weapons while you slice and dice your way through the main story, the guiding lines, or whatever content you may be in at this point. It's a weapon that I come back to frequently when I want to zip around all over the place and feel invincible. There are plenty of reasons to give dual blades a chance, so take up your choice of daggers, blades, fists, or whatever suits your style, throw your arms up into the air, and get to hunting.
but that's going to be it for this one. If you've been on the fence of whether or not to try dual blades, there literally has been no better time to do so. Dual blades have benefited greatly from things like the element cap removal, KR weapons, and its improved tenderizing capabilities. Discord and Patreon links are in the description below, so feel free to join our Discord community. If you liked the video, let me know with that thumbs up. Comment down below what you think of dual blades and whether or not you'll be giving them a chance. Subscribe if you haven't already for more Iceborne, Monster Hunter, and other gaming content. Have a good night and happy hunting.